My sister's always been the loved one in the family. Every single thing that she does, they go and protect her even if she's in the wrong. Well, guess what? She just found out how much my salary is, and she's demanding that she gets a cut of it. And you won't believe this, but my parents actually have her back. You must have heard about how, well, all parents have their favorite child. And when they do, let me tell you from experience, they'd walk to any end of the world to get them what they want. Literally. I'm not sure you can tell from the title what it's going to unfold, but I sure as heck can tell you that sometimes family can be a real pain to deal with. Especially if you have a sister, who's slightly cuckoo. She doesn't have any mental issues, so I'm not throwing shade at people who do. It's just she's perfectly normal human being who woke up and chose to be the devil. But before I get started on how much of a devil she is, let me tell you why I refer to Mia as a devil. It's completely justified, so don't come at me, please. When we were kids, my parents expected me to look out for my siblings, and this wasn't just because I was the oldest and most responsible child. No. It was also to do with the fact that I had my crap together. Yes, I knew what I wanted and what I was doing. So, for that very reason, everything was on my mind. But everything changes once you leave the nest. Example, your parents' home. The whole dynamic has to change, and it did for us. I went to university and majored in software engineering. I met Jack, fell in love, married him, bought a house, and now live happily together. I wish the story would just end there, but it doesn't. And sometimes I think the universe just likes to play with me and toy with my emotions, because that seems to happen pretty darn often. Returning to the story. Mia always found it hard to land and keep a job. I think she found it hard to keep her job rather than land it. Anyways, she could never have a stable job. Now, how is this my fault? Well, it isn't. The last time I was in contact with her, she told me she had lost her job, and when I asked her why, she said the boss was an a-hole. I didn't take her too seriously, given that she had a bad reputation in the workforce. So... I just nodded in agreement with her and let the conversation slide. One thing to note with my sister is that she's always thinking that she's right. So don't even judge me for not correcting her. She's a full-blown adult who can make decisions independently. The last thing I need to be doing is going behind a 24-year-old and just nagging to her about workplace ethics. Anywho. I moved on with life and didn't question her further. It saved me a heck ton of energy. It wasn't until later, when I had met up with a couple friends, did I hear the whole story. Brace yourselves cause you're in for a ride, a rather bumpy one. As I've mentioned previously, my sister is spoiled brat who thinks she's entitled to whatever she wants. Her boss at her last job couldn't stand it, hence firing her. So. Mia never thought she had to study or put any effort into anything she did. She would rather sit and wait for it all to fall on her lap than work. It's the very reason she dropped out of college and ended up waiting tables and taking people's orders from behind the cashier. I'm not looking down upon those people, but those jobs require so much physical effort Mia simply could never last. The last job she had was a barista at Starbucks, and you would think she would go through the effort of learning how to make all those smoothies and lattes. You guessed it, she wouldn't. But that wasn't what got her fired. Oh no, it was her stinking attitude. A customer had wanted a pumpkin spice latte and requested the usual milk, be switched out for almond milk. My brilliant sister hadn't bothered changing it up. That person was allergic to cow's milk, and the customer fainted in the restaurant, going into anaphylactic shock. They rushed him to the hospital and were about to counter it with epinephrine. When the manager asked all the employees who was responsible, she didn't even step up. Well, it wasn't until several days later when a fellow employee had an anonymously tip the manager that it was in fact Mia. The worst part of the story was that she denied it. 
The guy could have died, and she didn't have the tiniest bit of remorse. When the manager pulled her up, she refused, making her situation all the worse. And she was fired on the spot because other employees had all witnessed what she'd done. And uh, that for you is Mia, my sister, who I hate with a vengeance. After her terrible fall from grace, she made the headlines in the local newspaper in our area. Thank the heavens for that, as I was in a different state and couldn't handle being tied to her. After the whole fiasco at her last job, she could not land an even janitorial job at a high school. Talk about a lack of trust. I felt terrible for her, and decided to visit her with Jack over the weekend. Jack agreed that it was only right that we went to cheer her up, and maybe even put her in a good mood. Put in a good word, possible, at some local business to help her land yet another job. Well... We drove four hours to meet my very loving sister. Note the sarcasm. See, my mother was overjoyed and seized me and decided to organize a family dinner that night. Called in some other friends and relatives who lived close by. It was a welcome change until Mia came along and ruined everything. It was like any other family dinner, but before any of us were wasted... I caught up with some relatives and friends as they inquired about my new job and how everything was getting along. Let me be honest here. The reason Jack and I decided to drive four hours was also to do with the fact that I'd gotten a promotion at work and my boss had significantly bumped up my salary. So Mia losing her job and my promotion was just bad timing. And I felt bad. A childhood friend of mine had inquired how work was going. And if I had any tricks up my sleeve about how to make it in the industry, since he was also studying software engineering. And just like how all conversations move on to salaries and money, so did ours. Then I made about 200k a year. About 16,000 a month! On the higher end of the spectrum for a software engineer, yeah. In addition to this, Jack was in one of our conversations and gave him some advice as well. I don't know if it was Jack's loud, deep voice, or if Mia was eavesdropping on our discussion because this was what she screamed next. You make 200k a year? The whole room fell silent. I looked at her awkwardly and tried to signal her to shut up, but there was no stopping her when she was angry. She continued screaming at the top of her lungs, you never supported me, you selfish woman. You didn't get me a car, not even a gift for my birthday. You call yourself a sister? Everyone shifts in their seats uncomfortably as she rants that I'm nothing but a useless piece of paper. <laughs> Who doesn't know how to, quote, look out for family? See, this is the thing with Mia. She emotionally blackmails people, and if you don't, have your head firmly on your shoulders you can easily get swung. Jack and I were the only ones because we wanted to support her and nothing else. Our friends and relatives awkwardly excused themselves and left the room. When the last of them left, I screamed back at her, I came here for you. All of this is for you. Jack and I gave up our wedding for you. Well, I was angry. I didn't know what I should say or how to say it to convince this delusional human being that I was on her side. You'd think it would end there, and she would walk it off and huff about it, but no. Leave it to Mia to escalate things. While we were screaming at each other, Jack tried to pull me away while my parents tried to pull Mia away. They did succeed, for she fell silent and turned around. I only assumed that she would walk away and this would all be done with, but before I realized what was even happening, she grabbed a plate of stuffed peppers, closest to her, and tossed it towards me. I ducked in time and watched it shatter against the wall behind me. The plate cracked, cut my foot. I mean, it wasn't deep, but I was bleeding profusely, and decided to make everything more dramatic just to see if the person who was supposed to be my sister even cared. I fell to the ground, gripped the wound, and winced in pain as Jack rushed to me and tried to stop the bleeding. My parents rushed over with a dish towel, and while the three of them fussed over a cut of mine, 
Mia stood there with her arms crossed and looked away. She didn't deserve my mercy, my sympathy, or my help. She didn't deserve anything. That night, as Jack and I lay in the spare bedroom, we decided that we would head back home first thing in the morning. I thought I would hear a knock at some point during the night time, and Mia would be there to apologize for the drama she created, and of course, all the embarrassment she brought towards our family, but she never did. I must have fallen asleep at some point, because I was as shaken awake by Jack, telling me Mia was not home. I rushed downstairs in pain, and the cut must have been deeper than I thought and leaned against the kitchen counter, watching my parents make frantic calls to her friends, relatives. My brother was sent out to scout in the park, local areas for Mia, since she would do anything for attention, and I mean literally anything. Just to show you what extent Mia would go when she was 18, she, well, used something on her wrist. Just to protest because our father wouldn't let her get lip fillers. <laughs> yeah, that's the length that she would go to get lip injections. So, with the whole fiasco that had unfolded last night, you would think she would have done something worse to herself. We could only imagine, so my parents' paranoia was totally justified. Jack and I ended up staying there the whole day, and it was only after 24 hours we could file a missing persons report. But I guess Mia knew this because she showed up at our house like nothing ever happened. My parents fussed over her while Jack and I could only watch, to think she could worry all of us, and then just return and act as if nothing happened. That was something only Mia was capable of doing. With all the stress from the weekend, Jack and I were burned out and tired, so we decided to take Monday off and return that afternoon. The following day, Mia went mute, refused to talk, stopped eating, you name it. I don't know how she did it, and to be honest, you would think a grown woman would just move on from all this drama and get over with it. But no! She shut herself in her pink, girly tween room and didn't answer the door for anything. It was only at night that my father, who had a spare key to the room, would check on her to see if she was still breathing. Yeah, he had a spare key to only her room because that was how she was from when she was small. Locked herself in her room, hurt herself, gagged herself with her phone charger, and even tried to, well, use water and not come back up in the bathtub. You'd think that, well, she would be mentally disturbed, but she was far from it. She used these tactics to get attention as if she didn't have my parents wrapped around her pretty little pinky finger. It was Wednesday when we heard my mother scream from upstairs. We all rushed up to find my mother sobbing over Mia's limp body. She was pale and shriveled up, like a dead body left out in the cold draft of October. My brother dialed emergency services and we rushed to the ambulance to the hospital. Dehydration and starvation. Now, yeah. obviously she had fainted. Her blood pressure was so low, the doctors had to administer the IV of the medicines carefully. I know I'm supposed to be worried, sibling, who cares for my sister who almost tasted death. But she asked for it. She asked for everything she'd gone through and no one else was to blame except her. I told Jack that we should just leave and get back to our lives because knowing my sister, I wouldn't be surprised if this was all just an elaborate ploy to make us keep taking days off and then losing our jobs. Yeah, that was the sort of person she was. Jack agreed with me, and once Mia was discharged from the hospital, I told my parents we would leave the following day. I don't think this will continue anymore, as we will be millions of miles from my family. But I'd be sure to update you folks if anything interesting else happens. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a very dramatic one. A very hard family tie, it looks like. Update number one came out literally six hours later. OP thought there wouldn't be another update, but oh, OP was wrong. Here's update number one, six hours later, and guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, 
take a second right now and smash that subscribe button, as it really does help support me, and I deeply appreciate every single subscriber. And now time for your update. We didn't even have time to pack all our stuff up before Mia pulled another tantrum. I'm sure she must have spoken to my parents and won them over, because we were in the living room again, staring each other down as if we were a 1900 Midwest gunfight. <laughs> Mia remained seated in her wheelchair, and just behind her were my parents, as they demanded I either buy Mia a car or put out a down payment towards a home. Um, excuse me. What? I had to pay for a car? A freaking house? For Mia? This was just crossing lines and strides. Who would have thought my parents would be foolish enough to agree with a mentally deranged child of theirs, but they did. And they did so wholeheartedly. I told them they've lost their ever-loving minds, and that I would never put in so much money for a person who didn't value anything, and given to them. <laughs> okay, listen here. Cars aren't so expensive, and I could have easily gotten her a car and just been done with it, but I know Mia. She wouldn't have wanted the most cheap car or the most mid-class. No, she wants the most expensive. And that woman doesn't even work. Who's going to pay for the fuel? Who's going to pay for the maintenance? Certainly not me. Well, it would have ended up on my head anyways. And if I were to put up a down payment for a home, how would she be able to pay the monthly mortgage? With coconuts? Because as far as I know, Mia's not getting hired anytime soon. And to make matters worse, my parents don't work and are living off their retirement money. I would hate for them to give up everything just to appease Mia. I guess my parents didn't think through this. Because when I told them, they fell silent and thought that I won. I was waiting to rush out of the place as soon as possible. But boy, I was wrong. Instead of thinking through anything, oh no, they had something up their sleeve. They blamed me. Like, excuse me, what have I done? They said all of this happened because of my lack of concern for Mia. Okay, so what? I'm supposed to support her by pumping into a never-ending line of cash, which she would inevitably waste on pompous items like she drained me of every single dollar I owned and eventually make me suffer. No. No thank you. I'd rather much have nothing to do with her. I could only watch Mia grin. Well, it looks like her plan worked. She looked like a shriveled old witch. If this was what my parents' stance on this whole matter was, I would be better off without them. So I stormed out of that room and Jack followed me as we packed up the last of our stuff before walking out of the house without another word. Update number two. The last time I updated you all was when I walked out of my family's lives. I had assumed they wouldn't contact me or reach out because the way I left would only mean I didn't want to have anything to do with them. It was about a week by then when I received a message on my phone that $10,000 had been transferred to some random account. I knew it was not Jack's because we had a joint account where we handled all of our day-to-day -day expenses. This was from my savings account, which I don't touch unless Jack and I want to go on a holiday or renovate the house. I didn't want to freak out at work, so I took a couple of measured breaths and tried to think if I had set up any planned payments. There was nothing I could remember, so I logged into the banking portal online and checked the transfer details. To my dismay, it was a bank in the state of my parents and siblings lived. I didn't want to jump to conclusions, so I requested half of the day off and rushed away. I needed to let Jack know, so I called him and told him on the way to my bank, and I don't know about you, but $10,000 is a lot. I know I make way more than that, but the cost of living is so high, and I saved up for IVF. Yeah, we've all got our problems. But my parents and Mia don't seem to realize that. Well, they never bothered to ask, so how would they know anyways? I was always alone from the start until Jack came along and showed me. There was beauty in bonds and relationships, and 
As soon as I reached the bank, I let the bank manager know and we were on our way to track where the money had mysteriously disappeared to. Quote, Do you know anyone by the name Mia Rogers? Yeah. The money has been transferred to the bank account of Mia Rogers. Unfortunately, since it was a transfer, we can't block it. If it were a transaction, we could have blocked it, ma'am. Okay, I said gritted through teeth, stomped out of the building and drove home in a fury. It must have been heaven's mercy that I didn't get into a crash of how fast and recklessly I drove home. I was not letting Mia get away with this one. I had had enough of her and her childish tricks and games. I had called her multiple times, and every time I called, I got the same pre-recorded message with her annoying voice. How can a voice be so irritating? You'd want to burn your phone. The wait for Jack to get home at 6 was excruciating, and by then I had a three mugs of coffee and was feeling sorta jittery. The worst thing I could do, but what else was I supposed to? A sister, hundreds of miles away, was taking money from my account that I had saved up, and I was supposed to sit back and relax? Update number three. We have not been on the road for 30 minutes, and when I got another alert on my phone, Jack said we needed to drive there if it meant we had to put a stop to all this, and so we did. That night, we drove all those miles, hoping to reach there and come to some sort of agreement with a deranged sibling of mine. Quote, Cash transfer of 15000 to bank account ending in XX0912. It must have been the coffee, or I don't know if it was the sheer shock of seeing that amount of money leave my account, but I started hyperventilating. My air passageways closed up and everything went dark. I scrambled for my puff and gripped Jack's arms, who had now pulled over and he must have had the extra EpiPen because everything calmed down and I could finally breathe again. Talk about having a panic attack in the middle of a road. I'm glad we didn't crash. Jack asked me what was wrong and when I explained the whole situation to him, he said we needed to block the accounts before Mia continued to steal money from us. So, that is precisely what we did. Thank the Lord for 24-hour service because I don't know what I would have done. With my account blocked and no way for anyone to access it, we drove in peace for the next hour and a half until we reached my parents' home. We got out of the car and walked out to the front porch and peeked in through the windows. It was one morning, so we didn't expect them to be awake. I didn't want to disturb my parents despite them taking me aside, so I reached for the pot next to the door, and viola, the keys were there, same place as always since we were kids. The house was dead silent. We tiptoed to my parents' room to check on them. Sure enough, they were sound asleep snoring. In fact, my brother was in his room on the same floor sleeping on a pile of dirty laundry. Any person from outside would have thought that we were thieves, the way we were tiptoeing around the house, peeping into rooms and whatnot. Well, regardless of what people thought, we checked in on Mia. Her room was empty. Everything was in disarray, as if someone had pulled everything out of her closet looking for something. That was it. That was the last straw right there. I switched on all the lights, woke up my parents, and demanded where Mia was. Calm down, I know it was pretty mean of me to wake my parents up like that, but they were the ones putting up with Mia, so they also have to deal with the drama. We all gather in the living room and try to figure out what to do. What could we do? We were in the dark here about Mia's whereabouts, and we couldn't file a missing person report until 24 hours. So, we waited. Excruciating as it was, we had no other choice because that was all we could do. Update number four. It's been more than 24 hours, but more like 36. And we haven't heard a peep from old Mia. She's missing. $25,000 and all my hard-earned money, and I was supposed to just sit around until the police conducted their investigation? No way. I told Jack we need to take things into our own hands. So that is precisely what we did. 
I knew Mia was a social media junkie, and all her socials were public. So we could use that as a guide to figure out where the heck she ran away with my money. I opened up Instagram, and her last post was from two days ago. But that wouldn't stop me. I knew if others posted a picture with you and tagged you, it would be attached to your profile under the tagged area. Check there, but nothing. She was smart, and whoever was helping her had already formulated this plan way ahead. I went to her Snapchat next, and there it was on a friend's story. Mia! In the background, drunk and high on drugs. I knew the club courtesy of my wild high school friends. So, Jack and I drove to the club in hopes that we would find her there. We turned up empty-handed again. The manager said that the parties were done at 5 in the morning and that we were too late. By then, it was 9 and I was running out of ideas on how I could find this deranged human being. Jack suggested we talk to one of the employees and see if we could get any leads, and sure enough, we did. A bartender said he'd seen Mia leave with a group of friends, and he mentioned someone by the name of Rock. Yeah, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Must have been a fan, and the bartender says he owns a studio on the other side of the city, where they always have an after party. Well, I thanked him. I thanked him with all my heart, and I left. Things were finally looking up, and I had this growing feeling of hope that we would find Mia soon, and I would get all my money back. I have to be honest, I wasn't really looking for Mia, because I was worried for her, but instead I wanted my money. Before you judge me and say that we're a dysfunctional family, yeah, you're right. The further I'm away from this family, the better. It just happens that my sister stole thousands of dollars from me. Money I would have to use to have a child. So, we drove up to the studio, and all we could hear was music and lights flashing around the house. The bartender said The Rock wasn't someone to mess with, so we had to sneak in and find Mia. As if my life wasn't dramatic enough, we had to hide behind a naked statue. Why me? Apart from the fact that it looked like we were in a multi-million dollar studio, I noticed the people here reminded me of Mia. Spoiled, rotten, rich, and full of themselves. Jack and I wanted to get the heck away from there, but we needed to make sure Mia was not there before we scooted off. We remained crouched behind the naked statue for what seemed like ages, and when I spotted Mia walking out of the room with the tall man smoking marijuana. So, these were the type of people she was moving with. I needed to be smart about this, so we waited till she was alone in the corner of the room before we approached her. And when we did, you're not going to believe this. She looked past us as if we were non-existent and said, Well, where is the money? Asking her angrily. I don't know what you're talking about. As she looked away. The audacity. It took everything in me to be stopped from myself punching her across the face. Jack tried convincing her to come back home and we would sort it out in a civilized manner, but she refused. I knew she would make it difficult, and that was how Mia operated. So, I threatened her. I threatened her with the police, and told her how I would ensure she goes to prison for this, if she did not return the money. It must have worked because she stood up and told us to follow her to the balcony. If I could disown a sibling, I would, because that's what I did at that moment. When she took us to the balcony, she spun around to face us and said, I spent it all. With no remorse on her face. I'm at a loss for words. That was the last thing I expected to hear. You must be wondering how a person could spend all of that money in 24 hours. Well, that's Mia. She can do this and expect an average person to just accept it. I didn't. And I didn't want to waste any more time. The money was spent. On what? I don't know. All I knew was that she was going down for ruining my life. Update number five. A final update posted by OP. It's been a month since the whole drama. Hey guys, a month later, she's serving time in jail. Yeah, I reported her and was the one who ensured she was put behind bars. 
If I had not, my parents would have brushed it off and said that Mia deserved the money, since, you know, I hadn't helped her financially all these years, yada yada yada. I found out how she laid hands on my money. The Rock was involved. When the cops told me that The Rock had come clean and how they had elaborately set up everything, I didn't even bat an eye. Just take one look at that guy and you know he's up to no good. Apparently, they had a guy who knew how to forge signatures. Got two checks, signed it so it didn't look too suspicious and cashed it. Don't ask me how Mia managed to get my signature, but she did. The guy was arrested and so was The Rock. Although, they had gone the extra mile to do all this for Mia. They had no idea where she would have used the money except for the marijuana she bought from the gang. To be honest, I don't know why Mia associated with such people. What did she get to expect? Imprisonment? Anyways, life is calmer and better, and we're working out a way to retrieve at least some of the money back. The problem is, she spent it on so many random things like... Expensive clothes, shoes, I don't feel bad after she ended up in jail. It isn't for a long time. She got a five-year sentence. Maybe the time there will reform her. I'm hoping it will. You must have expected the story to end with Mia and me patching things up after my parents demanded I buy her a house or a car. But nothing could have prepared me for an ending like this. I like it this way. Just me and Jack. It's really unfortunate to see a sibling in a story like this just venture down the wrong path, ultimately basically leading to a toxic situation involving the entire family. And now OP has to deal with this and the outcome of this and losing all that money, having to get the sister arrested, getting all the people involved arrested, The Rock, you name it. Guys, this story was a wild one, but I do want to hear from you. What do you think about this? And if you've ever had an experience with you or your sibling or someone of your friends that you know through their siblings, let me hear about it in the comment section. Thank you for joining me on today's story. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I read stories every single day, try to cover a lot of different topics, and you can guarantee I'll put every update I can find. Thank you once again, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.